another question that came through is uh, anything in particular about uh, combining shell elements with solids or you know linear elements with, with solids or shells? Uh, anything in particular you can talk to about that? Yeah, there's definitely some issues with that. Um, one of the things that I hadn't really gotten into was that solid elements in the rotational degrees of freedom on the nodes of a solid element are singular. And Nastran will constrain those rotational degrees of freedom out of elements. You'll end up with a piano hinge along there where the elements can just spin around. And that's never a good situation. <clears throat> so when you connect, um, and, and the same applies to bar elements and shell elements, is generally when you bring two different types of mesh together, you need to spread the load around one way or another. And <clears throat> ways that that can be done, um, Nastran has something called an RBE3 element that's a, a, a rigid, it's not really a rigid element, but it's an inter averaging interpolation element that will allow you to say this degree of freedom, the rotation and deflection of this degree of freedom is a function of the translations of nearby nodes and nodes. And that's one way to transfer it. Another way is to do it with rigid elements. And of course, what I always tell people is transition. I would do anything you could possibly do to move that transition somewhere else. So those are some of the, the strategies. But you always, the other thing you need to be a little bit careful of is if you have a, a tetrahedron mesh, <clears throat> they are parabolic elements with mid-side nodes. And if you connect it into a shell mesh, it's very hard to do it directly and what we often use to do that is some kind of a, a, a contact, a welded contact algorithm, because that will connect the degrees of freedom without trying to enforce uh, continuity and compatibility where it's not going to happen. 